Welcome back to Section 5 Live for AJ Feldman. I'm Alexa Ross. If you couldn't tell, we're doing it a little differently. We are back, back at, the at the desk. Normalcy, it's approaching. Shout out to the CDC. <laughs> The CDC also gave us student sections this week, which was really, really cool. Yeah, they did. Um, last Friday was my first big experience with the student sections coming back. I believe it was Fairport and Penfield. Real rowdy crowd. Um, I want to make sure I get this right. Um, it was the Penfield fans who showed me a lot of love. Shouting out News 8. News 8, you're the best. Disparaging our competitors, it was great. You know what? I've also gotten that from Penfield. There, there's some, there's some sneaky, sneaky there fellows over ones. there, but they're fun. It's been really cool, and Did it's also great to see because you know, these kinds of sports, the spring sports, don't usually draw crowds like that until much later. And I think they're just trying to now make up for all this lost time to just be at everything, no matter what, and just make sure that they're there supporting, which is really awesome. Yeah, definitely. You know, you get a. I mean, compared to what's going on, going on even just earlier in the season, you get a student section in, really umps up the atmosphere, kind of gets your a little bit of a playoff vibe uh, a little bit early here. Oh, yeah, and I think that we're going to talk about a lot of playoff caliber teams and teams that we think could definitely be making it far. Let's start with our boys team of the week, and we're going to go with Webster Thomas. They have a perfect 8-0 record. They've been outscoring their opponents 104 to 29. Their offensive talent is off the charts. They're averaging, get this, 13 goals per game. Pretty it's good. incredible. Pretty good. And Joe Russo, he's been leading the team with 18 goals. He had hat tricks in back to back games both yesterday and a couple of days ago. Daniel Petz, he leads the team in assists with 15 and total points with 29. Evan Pashalaitis is right behind him, 15 goals and 10 assists. He and Joe Russo both have. 25 total points. AJ, we both watched them this week. What did you see from them? What was the thing you took away? Yeah, I saw them take on Greece. Um, definitely a lower caliber team um, compared to Webster Thomas. But just what really impressed me was the efficiency. You know, won the draw, scored a goal. Won the draw, scored a goal. They did good on the man up opportunities. They defended well um, against a man up opportunity of their own. So really just a, a clinic game where you like to see them, you know, take care of a good team. And they haven't, you know, played the upper echelon teams, but you got to see them play a pretty, pretty good team uh, earlier this week as well. Yes. So when we, when I got to see them, it was at Penfield, so they weren't on home turf. As we said, Penfield fans are pretty rowdy, and they really can get it in your head. It did not matter. They went up two, and then Penfield scored their first, which was fine. But then they just kept going. Joey Russo back-to-back -back goals to complete his hat trick before the first quarter was even over, which was kind of nuts just to see. I mean, they pass well. They are moving the ball as if they're kind of like a well-oiled machine is mm -hmm. how I look at it. And you see these teams that are the upper echelon in, cla in um, Class B, for boys lacrosse especially. They're all teams that are really well coached, really they know how to execute, and there's a lot of talent, a lot of Division One talent too. So... I think that this is where we're going to see the contending between the top three teams, Victor and Canandaigua as well, to see who's going to slide into that top spot, second spot, and third, because I think it's going to be really close. All three are undefeated right now. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, the strength of Class B. So far, any time that these top Class A teams have played these top Class B teams, it's been Class B coming out on top. And I know that, you know, that's not super surprising for Section 5 lacrosse. Class B has always been super strong. But this year in particular, you've got Canandaigua, you've got Victor, you've got Spenceport as well undefeated. And all these teams are undefeated right now. They're going to start playing each other. You've got Victor and Canandaigua. They're going to play each other on Memorial Day. You've got Webster Thomas. They're going to play both Victor and Canandaigua in the next upcoming week. We're going to talk about that matchup later in the show. But Spencerport, they don't play any of these teams. So we'll have to see, um, you know, you won't, we won't really be able to see how they fare up in the class until, you know, we get to the section of playoffs. And I have to be honest with you, as this is my first time back covering spring sports in now two years, back in section four, I know each section evaluates their sectionals differently. So I'm interested to see how these non-league versus league games do play out for seeding purposes, because Spencer Fort, like you said, awesome team, but they've played, you know, that strength of schedule that we're looking at mm -hmm. in regards to non-league teams might be the thing that kind of bumps them down further to have a greater upset that's not actually an upset because they were an incredible team in the first place. Luckily, we get more than four teams in sectionals this year, unlike football, so don't get that <laughs> drama on our hands. Switching over to the girls' side, we are awarding our girls' team of the week, the Victor Blue Devils. They just defeated Rush Henrietta at 10 to 9 tonight. It happened about, oh, an hour ago. 
Big win for them, taking down RH. RH, they handed Pittsburgh their first loss of the week, so really both two strong teams playing out on the field today with Victor coming out on top by one goal. Earlier this week, Victor with two big wins over Hilton and Aronicoit, 21 to 6 and 21 to 5, both by at least uh, there'll be 15 goals each, those two teams. Not in that elite echelon, but both those teams actually are at or above 500, so those are no slouches. Entering tonight's game, Eva Pronti, 18 goals, 36 assists to lead the way. And Kylie Gelabert, 28 goals, 24 assists for the Blue Devils. So both those players already at 50 points this season. And that's going to be another team, you know, the Victor boys, obviously super duper strong as well. Looks like the girls are matching them as well. There's not much you can say about Victor other than it's just, you know, they're very good at what they do. That's just what it <laughs> All is. All sports. All sports. It's incredible. I mean, the t I don't know what's in the water there, but sign us up. It is awesome to see. And so it's really nice, especially because of all of the attention that the men's team has had, or the boys' team has had over the years to just, you know, the girls are meeting it. They could exceed it. We can, again, we'll just have to see how things shake out. Yeah, same thing with, um, with girls lacrosse. These top teams are starting to play each other. We just saw, of course, RH play Pittsburgh and then Victor. I believe it's Pittsburgh and Fairport tonight. Still waiting to see a final on that. But we're starting to get these top teams play each other, especially in girls lacrosse where those elite teams and those good teams, that gap is pretty large where it's really fun to see those elite teams play against each other. Oh, yeah. So we should have a very, very fun bracket come sectionals time. We also have a really fun story to introduce to you right now. Ruby De Palma from Spencerport Lacrosse. The junior was only born with just one arm. She is thriving in her first varsity season. De Palma, one of Spencerport's leading scorers this season. Seven goals and six assists when we last checked earlier this week. Never let her birth defect define her. You talk to her, she just, you know, it's part of her. She gets it, but it really doesn't define her at all, you know. Great attitude there, receiving interest to play college at the D3 level. And as I mentioned, when she's out on the field, just like everybody else. I don't think I'm very like timid on the field. Like I feel like I belong and I usually forget about my arm and I feel like other people like my teammates do too. She just has the mentality that she's just as good or a better athlete and lacrosse player than everyone else out there. And she's just always confident. Are there any limitations? And the answer is no. There's nothing that I have ever asked of these players that Ruby can't do. And if anything was challenging, she's made modifications on her own, and you know she's she's better off for it. And you can find that full story at RochesterFirst.com. Definitely one of the favorite ones I've had to tell so far. But we've also got some already some follow-up. So at the end of that story, I mentioned that um, you know she doesn't she didn't know anybody who had uh, you know one arm playing lacrosse things like that. Maybe she could be an inspiration for somebody. Received an email the next morning from a dad out in Penfield. She's, he's got a six-year-old daughter who um, has a similar birth defect, and she's like, I, "I'd love to." She was like, "He was like, I'd love to, you know, introduce the two, have them talk to each other." I've got their contact info working around. It looks like it's going to happen. So just really great to share that because you know we're we're bringing people together here. Oh my gosh! I can't <laughs> wait to see the follow-up for that. That's so nice. Last football season, I did a story <laughs> of a quarterback with one hand. All right, and let's I take cried. it down an octave. <laughs> We're going down an octave. <laughs> and it's just, it's so inspiring to see people overcome adversity no matter what it is, especially when it's, you know, athletes really, you rely on your body. And mm -hmm. so to see you, you know, do what your teammates can do, do it better, do it as efficiently, more efficiently, it's just, it's awesome. I hope that that follow up happens, and I'm so excited to see that when it does. Definitely. Well, it is time to turn our attention to the Diamond, and we have our softball team of the week. Yes, Webster Schrader, a lot of Webster in this show. They handed Victor their only loss of the season on Friday. Like I said, we're getting into that. We're matching up teams. Junior mm -hmm. pitcher Molly Broccolo, she threw nine strikeouts, and she teams up with fifth-year varsity catcher Emily Corquera. They, are, they have obviously been playing together for a while. Emily is the most senior player on the team. She is always ready to complete a play at the plate. 
it is incredible to see the stills of her just making plays happen. Infielding strength continues with second base Amelia Arena and first base Hannah Secker. They're a dynamic double play duo. Say that five times fast. They're both utility players who can make it work, both really focus on infielding. They will probably appear against Victor in that class double A final, so it is going to be good to keep an eye out for these two teams. And that was the softball team that won last week's game of the week. Our baseball team of the week as we transition over to the boys side, it is Penfield who of course beat McQuaid in our game of the week last week. They topped them on Tuesday 2-1, to one, a strong week for the Patriots, a busy week for the Patriots. Last Thursday, a week from today, they shut out Rush Henrietta, took a loss against Schrader, but then they came back and then beat Spencer Port 14-5 on Monday. 6-0 to score against Spencer Port on Wednesday. Against McQuaid, of course, in that big matchup where is really the highlight of the Patriots week. Nick Ionello, sixth inning, a winner. Uh, sixth inning single, RBI single to come back. They scored two runs of that inning to make a comeback win. Gage Zeal, the Miami commits, five innings on the mound, just one earned run on three hits. His only earned run so far in the season, of course, a great dominant pitcher. That was a rematch of the 2019 class AA championship game. Could be heading that way again, and then leading the way for the Patriots so far this season. Peyton Pace at the plate. 457 average, two rib 10 ribbies, and a homer. And Zeal also getting it done at the plate as well. 419 batting average this season, 11 RBIs, and two home runs. And then, you know, just another really strong week from Penfield last week. They've got a good test coming up following week. Webster Thomas. More Webster in this show. They're undefeated in Class A. They've got a Monday-Wednesday series Ooh. with them, so that'll be another one to watch for, where if Thomas performs well, I think they're going to be our team of the week next week. There we go. There's, see, guys, there's a pattern, and it's always the games we pick. So, speaking of the games we pick, AJ, what's your game of the week? I'm heading back to the baseball diamond for our game of the week. We've got Athena taking on Arondicoit. Both teams with just one loss this season, and this was... Oh, are we going to go to Alexa's Game of the Week first? I, I guess we're going to go to my Game of the Week real quick. That is okay. We're doing boys lacrosse, staying in boys sports. Thomas and Cannon Dagua there together Wednesday at 7. They're undefeated right now. They're, pace, they're facing some pretty middle-of-the-road non-league teams until then. So it's probably still going to be a, a game of undefeated. Honestly, we'll see how that goes. This is a battle for number two in Class B. I'm excited to see if Thomas continues to impress or if Sam Bennett and company just tear off their home turf because I think that this is going to be um, where we really start to understand the seedings. Yeah, of course, you know, Victor, Spencer Brook, candidate with Thomas. If either of these teams makes a statement, I think they're, you know, the leaders in the clubhouse right now until the rest of each other's, you know, face each other. Yep. Heading back over to my game of the week, once again, Athena versus Arondequoit. Great baseball matchup that's happening tomorrow. Each team with only one loss of this season, and one of those losses came earlier this week when these two teams played against each other. Athena topping Arondequoit 7-6 to six in 10 innings. That's three more than they play in high school, if you guys didn't know. So, great game they played earlier this week. I'm looking forward for the rematch as well. And uh, both teams, as we mentioned, looking up in Class A to Thomas in the Class A standing. So it could be a big battle in order to determine that number two seed in the Class A bracket. And I will say, if we do get Greece, Athena, and Penfield, we are going to have a matchup of ACC commits with Miami's Gage Zeal and Virginia's Casey Sauke. So I'm really, I'm really hope that they get to go against each other before they go up and do it at the college level. So it'll be, you know... There's a lot of baseball talent around here. There's no denying that. There are a lot of guys, younger, older, whatever, who are either playing in college, playing pro, playing in farm systems. So, you know, there's a lot of guys to look up to, and they're just continuing that talent. It's going to be fun to watch for the rest of the season. Well, that is all for us on Section 5 Live here tonight. We will be back here next week. It'll be Thad Brown in this chair with Alexa Ross breaking everything down. Section 5 high school sports for you. Playoffs. Coming close. Not too far away. They're soon. They're really soon. They're really soon. Until that point comes, for Alexa Ross, I'm AJ Feldman. Have a great rest of your night. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.